Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how we can integrate Copilot with Shuffle so that we can streamline our incident management by seamlessly integrating our alerts with uh, perhaps some of our clients' third-party tools that they may be using, such as Jira, ConnectWise, or even sending email notifications out to your clients in an automated fashion. Shuffle gives us the ability to automate anything that we send and it doesn't have to stop there. Shuffle has the ability to automate anything. We just first need to present it data and Copilot is going to be the one that is going to present it data. So we can use Shuffle to automatically generate tickets in uh, various ticketing systems like Jira ConnectWise. We can integrate our SIEM alerts with other third party tools. Maybe for some reason you want to leverage the Hive or if you've built your own custom application that you want to forward your alerts that get generated by the Seam Stack too. Well, now you'll have the ability to do that. Or maybe you wanna interact back with tools that make up the Seam Stack, such as like the Wazoo Managers API. The possibilities with Shuffle are really endless uh, and, and is what makes it such a, such a fantastic tool to introduce into your Seam Stack. However, we need to first present it with data because without data, Shuffle is not gonna be any good. So in this integration, what we're going to do is configure Copilot to be able to send our alert data to Shuffle. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we first need to go into Shuffle and first create an API. Now, here I'm leveraging uh, Shuffle's cloud environment, which if you have watched our previous Shuffle video, which I'll link in uh, right now on the, on the screen, uh, we are leveraging Shuffle's cloud to give us a hybrid, source solution, meaning that we have our Orbis or worker container running within the same environment as our Seam Stack. However, Shuffle is hosting the front end towards us, but the steps will be the same if you have the full Shuffle stack deployed on-prem. So I'm gonna first go into my organization here. I'm going to select my users, and here I'm going to copy my API key. So once I have my API copy, API key copied, I'm going to go back into Copilot. I'm going to go into connectors, and here I'm going to go into my shuffle connector. I'm going to select the update button here. I'm going to paste the URL to Shuffle. Now, if you're just leveraging Shuffle's cloud, this will be the URL that you'll use. Uh, if you've deployed the Shuffle stack on-prem, then of course you'll have to point it to the host name of your uh, Shuffle environment. And then I'm going to paste my API key, which I just got back from copying it uh, within Shuffle's UI here. So once I've got that saved and verified, we now have the ability to integrate Copilot with Shuffle. Step one done. However, what makes Shuffle so powerful is the ability to create workflows, right? And we can have work, we can have multiple workflows that do you know various tasks such as automatically generating Jira tickets or integrating with other third party tools or any custom tools and any automated actions that you want to do with your alerts. So in this particular instance, I have just this Jira ticket one created, but you'll likely have to, of course, select new workflow. But once you have your new workflow created, you'll notice in your URL here, here we get what Shuffle refers to as the workflow ID. So I'm going to copy this value and I'm going to go back into Copilot. I'm going to go into customers and then I want to, I'm going to select the customer that I want to add whom this workflow will pertain to because one customer may be having Jira tickets, another customer may be having ConnectWise, right? I may have customers that depending on what tools they're leveraging themselves, I need the ability to differentiate what workflows pertain to a particular customer. So under my customers tab here, here I'll just select the lab environment. You'll see a new tab called notification workflows. So go ahead and create a notification. And here I'm gonna select enable, and then I'm going to paste the value of the workflow ID, which is exactly what we copied here from our URL when we created our new workflow. So once that's done, I'll go ahead and hit submit. And we now have our lab customer associated with the workflow ID. So it may also be a good idea to edit the title with like the customer code. So I could say like lab, for example. So go ahead and save that off. Um, but granted, 
any changes I make, it's not going to change the workflow ID as well. So, so do also bear that in mind. You only have to set this once unless, of course, you create a new workflow. All right, so now that that is done, and in the previous video, we also covered how to configure Copilot to start to create alerts, right? So I'll also link to that video right now. So that is, of course, a prereq to do uh, before you get started with configuring the shuffle integration. All right, so now if I go into my incident management here, and if I go into alerts, here, of course, we'll see our alerts. Now, Copilot is configured automatically to trigger our workflow if we have one set for the customer and every time that an alert is created. So for example, let me jump on to uh, just my test server here and let me just trigger an alert uh, that will trigger the threat intel. So I'll do a ping out to this host, which should in turn trigger the uh, threat intel integrated with Greylog. And all right, so sure enough, yep, I do see my threat intel being triggered in gray log, so that looks good. So now when our gray log alert, it looks like our gray log alert runs within the next minute here, we will get that alert created. And sure enough, it looks like my alert has been created. And if I go into my incident management alerts here, yep, sure enough, okay, we see the alert created is associated with the lab customer so now if i go into which again this lab customer right is is who we configured our notification workflow for so now if i go into shuffle and if i show my executions here okay great we do see our workflow has been triggered and if we expand out uh the execution arguments here we can see what copilot has actually passed to shuffle so we are now right, providing shuffle, Copilot is now providing shuffle with data. Here we're just leveraging shuffles API um, and the API is what we configured with the API key and then also setting the uh, workflow ID, right, so that we can accurately call shuffle and call the right workflow as well. And here we're presenting the data to shuffle. So this is what shuffle received from Copilot. Here's some data, but that's not what makes up all of the alert, right? We can first see, of course, the customer code, which is already going to be set, right? If you followed the, the customer provisioning. But now you'll notice the alert context payload. You may not want maybe the data win event data image or event data user, right? You may want other data fields so that when you're creating the ticket within JIRA, you can uh, present the right data to that customer. If you guys remember from the last video when we set up our uh, Wazoo alert source, right? One of those field name or one of those configuration parameters is the field names, right? So here we're defining the field names that will make up our alert context. So if I go back into my alert, if I select my asset, look at the context here. Here, if I select the context, you'll see all of the same fields that we see within Shuffle, right? We have all of them. Data event image, user, the, the MITRE stuff, process ID, process name, which I guess in this case, Sysmon didn't pick up on the process name, so it just flagged it as unknown, but that's not really relevant to uh, to today's topic. Um, but you can see here is how all of the fields are being set. So you now have the ability to customize this by configuring your Wazoo source for your alert creation. So Copilot is gonna take whatever you've defined within that source and is going to take those values. If they exist, you'll notice there were more field names configured under our Wazoo source. However, this particular Windows event, right, didn't have some of those fields. So where fields don't exist and where data is not present, Copilot, of course, is not going to add that. So you guys now have the ability to configure what data you want to send to Shuffle. So we've got the data to Shuffle, and that's what we're also seeing with this execution argument. There was no Jira ticket created. There was nothing done in this step. However, what we did, our first node here is our JIRA node. So here you can see the environment that I'm sending it to, which is my uh, Sock Fortress lab, which you'll notice on my Copilot host, if I do a Docker PS, for example, here you can see me leveraging that uh, shuffle hybrid approach, right? Where I'm running the Orberus container on-prem, running uh, with my Seam stack. 
which again, I covered in a previous video, um, which will be linked in the description below. But let's configure our Jira stuff. So what I wanna do within Jira is create an issue. You do of course need to add your authentication for Jira. And let me go ahead and add a comment of how to do that. Cause I am gonna post this workflow for you guys. Um, so. Uh, here are the steps, and I've also linked to the docs to uh, create your uh, Jira authentication, which I've already done in adding, because you will need that, because we're, of course, interacting with Jira's API to go ahead and create the ticket. Now, this is going to happen every time this workflow is executed. So uh, we just executed it a few minutes ago, or, so, co or rather, Copilot executed it a few minutes ago. Here we see it passing the execution arguments, and then here we can see that it indeed did uh, create a Jira issue. We can expand this out and see the response that we got back from Jira. So we got a 201, which does in fact mean that the ticket was created. So if I go into Jira, let me go ahead and refresh here and see, we should see a new Jira issue uh, has been created. And sure enough, here we do. So we see our Jira ticket and if we open this guy up, we just see, all right, we got a, a name, a issue name of test and then we just have this description of alert triggered for, for test. So how did that get set? Well, we are able to configure that within the body parameters of Jira's API. Right, so here we're defining the project key, which if you don't know how to get that within Jira, uh, you can just go into projects and like what you see within your parentheses here is SOC. So that'll be your project key that you'll set. You'll also need to set to a name um, here, the, or an issue type rather. So the name of my issue type is problem. And if you go like to your, to your project and select create, and then see the issue types. Here you can, you see I have a few of them that I could select from, but I've just decided to use problem. I think Jarek is the ability to create your own and stuff, but that doesn't really matter. I, I don't want this video to be focused solely around how to integrate your alerts with Jira, but just letting this serve as an example for how you can integrate with this with, with any system um, that supports an API that we can leverage Shuffle to, to use for. So let's go ahead and actually set these to some dynamic values, right? So let's first change the summary because the summary is gonna be the title uh, that Jira is going to, to set. So what I'm gonna do here is set my summary to be a dynamic value. So if we go back to our execution argument, what would be something good for our summary? Well, that might be our alert title field here. Uh, I may wanna set that. So let's go ahead and modify our Jira body to use that title. So I can remove my summary here, and if I select this autocomplete, you'll see here I can, uh, it makes it a little more user friendly to, to select our field. So here I can go ahead and select the alert title. And if I select that, oh, it looks like it pasted on the bottom. So here I can, uh, rather than where my cursor is at, I can just copy and paste that there. And then you'll also notice too, the expected output, it's populating it with the previous data from the last run, uh, which is helpful as well, because it allows you to verify and validate uh, the data contents that you're gonna be sending. Uh, now, maybe let's change the text as well. So here, um, I'm just gonna say like the customer code, alert triggered for, um, and then leverage the customer code. Again, let me copy and then paste that there. And here we can see it's gonna say alert triggered for lab because lab is in fact my, my customer code. All right, so I can go ahead and save that. And now, when I re-trigger this alert, let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, so we've re-triggered my alert. If I go back to my latest runs, we should see, and do we do? Let's look at the Jira response. Still got a 201, so that looks good. And now let me go back into my issues and we should have another one. And sure enough, here we do. And look at the summary of that alert. Here we're getting the alert title, right? So we're sending now dynamic data to Jira. And depending on what the alert is, uh, Shuffle is going to populate the contents of our JSON payload to Jira uh, with those appropriate details. And, sure, and here we also see that the alert triggered for lab. And I know Jira has like labels and stuff you could set. So you could do like create labels based on the customer code. Like really the possibilities are endless. I could add uh, further steps within this as well. So I could build upon this. Maybe this is another ticketing system. Uh, here I'll just say another 
ticketing system. Maybe for whatever reason, you want to send it to two ticketing systems. And here, if I rerun this workflow, then uh, Jira is going to create another ticket. And then we'll also get our next uh, execution, which is just the shuffle tools, uh, which is just the repeating of another ticketing system. But hopefully this starts to get you guys' minds moving in terms of, all right, this is how we can integrate our SEAM alerts with other third-party tools. So hopefully this integration allows you guys to explore and create your own workflows depending on you know your automation needs or your, your client's ticketing systems or really whatever it is that you wanna do with your SEAM stack alerts. Uh, I'm gonna publish this workflow as well. So if you guys want to uh, use this as just kind of a training aid or or want to explore on your own, um, then I'll have this published for you guys to. It did say fail publishing. I'll look into that. I'll see if I can uh, get it get it published. But uh, I'll add the Jira payload in our medium post as well, which I'll link in the description. So if you want to follow along, it'll be relatively easy. So that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one.